This episode of Boss Rush After Dark is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to learn how to support our family of podcasts, head over to patreon.com slash boss rush media or search for us on the Patreon app on your smart device. Thanks for helping us build something better. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Boss Rush After Dark, the alternative podcast show for the Boss Rush Network. I am your host, Laron, and back with me tonight are the wonderful Stephanie and, and Corey. What's up, fellas? And, well, what's up? What's up? What's up, people? Hello. Hey. I don't mean to misgender anybody. Oh, please. I'm sorry. I respond to guys, fellow, you. I'm, I'm cool. And joining Stephanie us tonight is. Hello. is... <laughs> And joining us tonight is an all-star from the Boss Rush Network. A lot of you people know this face or, or recognize his voice. It's always a pleasure whenever, whenever the wonderful Jesse does. This. Yeah, my face might be a little bit skinnier now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude. Welcome. Welcome to After Dark. Wait. I, I, this is your first After Dark, right? Because you've been on a Boss Rush podcast of us, but I don't think you met, I don't think you stayed around for After Dark afterwards. Am I correct? Yeah, I th- I don't think I've ever been on one other than like you know like we had did the one with uh, you know a long time ago with uh, the bad bitches, but you know like, yeah, it was like our very first attempt at this thing. Yeah, yeah. a long time ago. Yeah, this was, yeah. was pre Laron. Actually I, actually, I was around for I was around for I was around for the bad bitches, but I just never got a chance to like collab with them. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, and they don't they don't podcast anymore. I don't think so, which is no. kind of a bummer. Yeah, that sucks. They were yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were. I'm, they were. I'm so friends the with stuff... them on Facebook, but mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, so uh, how's everybody doing? Like this, uh, it's the it's the second week of the new year, um, and twenty twenty three treating you better than twenty twenty two did. Yep, not panicking at all, not stressed out about anything. <laughs> Which means yes, life's going good. <laughs> I've you say sl- that. slept at least eight hours a night. You know, doing great. The only way a- I sleep eight hours a night is whenever I take a CBD before I go to bed. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean for for me, like you know, like. I touched on a little bit on the regular episode, but like, you know, divorce, it's, it's still a lot of struggle for me. Um, you know, they're the, like, I don't mind talking about it a little bit, but you know, well, you, know like, what? The, you don't have to talk about anything you don't want to talk about. No, though, well, you know, no, I, I'm, I'm fine with talking about it. Well, if you want to, if you, if you, if you want to, and you're able to talk about it, I do have a question Yeah, because, um, because like I I don't have any friends who've actually gone through divorce in real time. Yeah. You know? oh. Yeah. In real time. In real time. So what was like I want to what was the biggest uh, I guess obstacle you know in this whole thing that that you that you had to experience? <laughs> well, I, I'm still going through a lot of a lot of struggle um, oversharing, um, you know, talking about things that I probably shouldn't be. As much as I do on social media, I just need to stay off of it. Mm -hmm. Um, But really, you know, like for me, like I'm struggling to to figure to figure some of the stuff out because, um, you know, there there's things that come and go that words and titles and things that that people will talk about. And sometimes you don't hear about them. Sometimes you do. Um, and, you know, like, I, my problem is with everything. So uh, I'm sure people have heard of the word narcissist. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so like, it's it's hard to say, you know, like looking looking back at everything, like I feel like maybe she she is one. 
mm-hmm. or or was one. Oh, no, is it, it would have to be is because it's there is no like you're not a narcissist and then you become one, as far yeah. as I know, and and except for like childhood, like that's where that's where it's kind of, but. So like my, my situation with my divorce is, is kind of difficult because like I, I was, so when she told me that she wanted a divorce, she had said she hadn't loved me for three years, but kept me around. Mind you, during that time, there is a lot of things that, that I should have noticed, I guess that that were that were kind of hints um and and you know like like my my marriage like i loved her to i loved her to death honestly i still do and that's Mm -hmm. part of the struggle still um but there's things that i that that i should have noticed but i didn't and you know until hindsight and looking at things but I didn't, I didn't get that. Like, first off, she didn't ever want to try. Like there was multiple times where I've tried talking to her in the past, you know, like, because I told her right out multiple times, like, I don't even really know you anymore. Like, because we became so distant and there were times mm-hmm. where I tried to bring that up to start a line of communication that never got started. I would say stuff like that, like, like we need to spend more time together. We need to do this. And she would just say, yeah, I know. And that's as far as it went. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah, Aged, I know. Like she disengaged. Yeah. And, and so like, I mean that like, so like back to the whole nurse, like there's just certain things that happened that make me that, looking into narcissism and the way that things play out and how things happen when you're, when you're in love with the narcissist, a lot of those things happen. Like, like, I feel like, you know, like the beginning of our relationship, like she was seriously like, like, holy shit, the universe like created this person specifically for me. Right. Like, Mm -hmm. like it was that, like I was that amazed at how similar we were and you know like I wanted to be with this person for the rest of my life like no doubt like there there was no doubt in my mind um and then we got married and and kids came along and and things happen understandably when you have kids like your sex life and things like that kind of get put on hold a little bit no, not in all cases. Like, I mean, they tell people that you shouldn't have sex for a reason because there's a lot of people that don't want to give, you know, don't want to give that part up. But it's understandable that that, that kind of takes a backseat for a little while. But that little while kind of turned into a lot of rejection and for years and years and years and and I went into the relationship with no insecurities, no nothing, but that stuff started to get created because I felt like like that that like okay, well like I shouldn't have to be asking for this all the time. Like this is something you should be wanting all the like wanting too. Like mm-hmm. you know, like but but that that part of it where we were both wanting it like in the beginning and then it turned into just me like wanting it and her never like you know putting any effort into anything like any of that kind of stuff like that disappeared and i became more and more insecure and more and more depressed because that that you know like sex in some sense is isn't super important but it is at the same time i would argue it's very important but i'm biased yeah (laughs) yeah like i mean like that there's a connection that you can have with a person that really only 
is is made stronger i feel like through that and when that connection is being completely cut off and and i feel like a a child asking their parent if they can go play <laughs> like all the time like that really <laughs> really really it, it's it's hurtful like it was hurtful like very hurtful um in some ways and and so that that like became the norm like there was no like her surprising me with things or there you know or dressing and you know and she says that was because of her insecurities and i understand that but like when the things do happen and i'm like telling you that you're crazy to think that i would ever for a second care about anything superficial like I married you for a reason and like, and I'm trying to constantly reassure you that, that there is, there is no reason for you to ever feel that, you know, that way or that I'm not going to love you or be interested in you in the way that I've always been, you know, like now, like, you know, I, I get, I understand insecurities because like I said, I, you know, like I was starting to develop them too because of what was happening. Um, and so, yeah, like the, that, that kind of became the norm and periodically throughout a relationship, like I would try to talk about it and it didn't go anywhere. And I'll be honest, you know, like things changed stuff stuff happened um and you know and it was like when i would bring out bring it up is like oh well you know i'm only interested in that kind of stuff at this and this time of the day and it's like well then you start to feel like okay so i'm only good enough at this and this time of the day <laughs> like you know like if that's if that's what, what you're saying like that's how it feels you know like and, and I didn't feel appreciated. Sometimes I didn't feel respected um, towards the end of my relationship. She literally was teaching the kids whenever I talked to just do this while I was talking. Yikes. Like teaching the kids to do shit like that. Like, wow. I mean, that's fucking hurtful. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, so, and, you know, mind you, she'll say, well, that's when I didn't, you know, didn't love you anymore, or whatever, but still, like, that's still not, so, okay, you're still, yeah. you're not, a, you're not a good friend then, even if you're doing that, like, right? And, like, and so I bring up a lot of stuff, like, I still, like, I, I'll throw stuff in her face, and I probably should just not and get over it, but it's like, I feel like I'm being... If you want to be a Patreon producer, head on over to Patreon, patreon.com slash Media, and find out which tier is right for you. Our Patreon producers at the $5 tier or higher for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian S., Sana Dierig, Francisco Santillan, and Rebecca Jewell. Thank you for your continued support. discounted like you know like when i bring up stuff and it's just like oh well, blah, 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 well it's too late now blah, blah, blah. and it just like it like it's being rolled over and it's like whatever whatever you know like my i just have a lot of feeling like maybe my feelings and the things that i felt and all that it just didn't really matter to you like you know it, i didn't matter enough to want to even try to fix this ever you know, like never tried once to try to fix this you would rather get rid of it and then <laughs> i fuck it i don't really give a shit but <laughs> she fucked like after after telling me that she wanted a divorce um she pretty much almost broke up two families in a week. She she went, she met up with her ex-boyfriend, 
who is married and had a kid Whoops. and Ooh. fucked him. And the only reason I found out about it is because his wife reached out to me and told me what was going on because she found out. Wow. E- and then when that and then when that didn't work, or literally after I found out, I I'm not kidding you, I was working third shift. I came, I, I found that out while I was at work. I went directly to the house. You know, again, we were already in the process of whatever figuring out separation or whatever. But I came home and I literally I I woke her up and I said, So you're so you're you would rather break up another family instead of fucking trying to fix ours? <laughs> like I was so pissed off. Like and she and like just screaming at her and and she's like, Well, I guess so. You know, like and I just oh man, like so yeah, there's been a lot of shit that that she like, and then then yeah, that didn't work out because they ended up wanting to try to fix their their marriage because so she had kind of knew that that they were um kind of rocky their relationship their marriage and so mm. she was gonna try to be that wedge. And to she almost it. she almost ruined that. Yeah. Yep. And then that didn't work out so now she's been ever since then she's been with who ended up being a neighbor down the street from our house where we lived Hmm. um and talking about kids and stuff like that very early on in the relationship because this is what what ended up happening is a lot of the things um that we didn't see eye to eye on um she didn't ever think about actually having a real conversation about anything with me ever about anything that was bothering her she like and she would say that it was because i would get crabby and like she she found it hard to talk to me about things and i said yeah you know what it was really hard probably to talk to me because for so many years i felt so useless and like just my feelings nothing mattered to you and so when you tried to talk to me about things yeah like sometimes I would get crabby because like we weren't ever talking about the things that needed to be talked about, you know, and that, and that's, and I was depressed and I was upset. And like, anytime I tried to talk about fixing our relationship, it got nowhere. So yeah, I was crabby (laughs) and I was, I gained a lot of weight and I, you know, there's a lot of things that happened because of, you know, like the way things went, but yeah, like one of the things was that she was upset because like I said I I would joke around and she she said she says like oh that she took it as being me being serious, but I would joke around and say that if we ever had another kid that I would leave her. Like, okay, I'm not going to literally do that. Like that was I was joking about it. And there was some truth to to the part of just not wanting to have another kid. It wasn't that I didn't want to have another kid. It was that I was looking at things logically. Like we were already always stressed out about money and not having money for things. Should we really be having another kid if if we're already like can't afford shit and running up our charge cards and all this because we're struggling already? Should we really throw another kid into that? No. Like, like I, yes, I would like to have another kid, but it's just not, not something we should be doing right now. And two, we got to fix this marriage first. Like before we start talking about another kid, we need to fix this marriage. So those were my reasons for not wanting another kid. You know, but I she didn't just, because just of real that, quick. Yeah. Just real quick. I got to say, I commend you for that because most people think another child will fix the relationship. No, no. Yeah, no. I, I like, cause I'll be honest, like I'm thankful to God or whatever. If, if he, if he's out there that I do have my kids, but like, honestly, like, it, like, this is going to be really sad, but it's true. Like it was kind of that way for, for my daughter. Like I was like, it was, it's sad, but like I truly felt during that time when she wanted to have another kid that holy shit, 
like I'm actually going to feel like I feel important right now for once. Like she needs me right now for this kid. And like, it sucks like that, that I had to be, you know, that I needed having another kid was when I could finally feel. But then of course, like after she's born, she didn't need me anymore for that. So then it went back to the, me having to ask for things all the time and, and being rejected and, you know, trying to put in effort and, you know, and like times where she's laying in bed on her phone and I'm just sitting there like staring at her like this. And she doesn't even realize that I'm like trying to get her attention or, you know, like it was oh, go to bed. And yeah, so there, there's a lot of that shit that just went on for so long. And, and then, you know, and then of course she tried blaming me starting to do podcasting and stuff a lot, but it's like, you know, hold up. I, you know, I said, you know, that like when I started doing the podcasting and stuff, I told you right out, if you ever, you know, like movie nights, if you need me, all you've got to do is tell me that. And th that's the point that I had gotten to. I had gotten to the point of where I was, I was sick of putting all the effort in and not getting anything from her side that now it's your time to step up and show me that, that you are able to put effort into it. And so like, I kind of like, I still put in effort, but is like, I need you right now. I need you to tell me that you want me. Like I've been telling you that I want you and I've been trying to, you know, like asking for you all the time. Like you have never done that. It's your turn now. Like that, like that's kind of what happened. Like I, I told her right out, like, you know, like Corey and, and Ed and like, you guys appreciated my time and me coming on the show and putting in the effort to doing the show. Like I was appreciated here. I wasn't appreciated at home. Like I wasn't appreciated in our relationship. So yeah, I went somewhere to do something that I enjoyed doing and felt appreciated because you weren't doing that for me. <laughs> like, and it was, I wanted you to show me that you appreciated me and you couldn't. Instead, you gave up on, on the relationship altogether and didn't even want to try. And then, yeah, tell me that you, know, you haven't loved me for three years, but kept me around, you know, after getting your breast reduction surgery and I'm helping you replace bandages and I'm coming home after work and doing shit in the morning and cleaning around the house, not because you asked me to, but because like, I was doing it and then I would get up early and get dinner ready and take care of the kids until you got home. And, uh, you know, like I was doing all this stuff and like, yeah, I just never felt appreciated. Like, and so, you know, like you start to question whether that person that I fell in love with in the, in the originally was real. Like, was that person real? Like, that's where the narcissist stuff starts to come in. And because she claims that those nights when I was conveniently, I was working third shift and I was never home, that she was crying herself to sleep for so long. But you never showed me those emotions. So how do I know that those were real? Like, how do I know that those were real? Like, because unfortunately with a narcissist, they don't know, they don't have real emotions. Like, and I needed to see those. Like, I needed to see that because you weren't showing me that when, when I, honestly, there, there was times where I came crying to her about how awful I felt and how shitty like i just wanted our marriage to get better and our relationship to get better and i came to you as a man crying and you consoled me in the moment but those things that i talked about that were bothering me never changed so therefore what i i did that and it didn't matter 
enough for you to want to change. So again, like, was I married to a narcissist? Like, I don't know. Like I, I want to think that no, because you know what that also means? That also means she doesn't really actually love our kids either. If she's a narcissist, because they can't even love their own kids. They're just, Mm -hmm. uh, they're just, uh, extension of themselves that they can manipulate and control and try to turn into them like like it's 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 fucked up like narcissism is a really fucked up thing and it's mental it's a mental thing um and you know like you want to feel bad about people who have mental disabilities but like this one is it just it rides that borderline of like i do feel sorry like if she is one i do feel sorry that she can never feel real love and will always be miserable for the rest of their life but at the same time it is so fucking destructive and hurtful yeah you know like it's really it's our difficult one it's a difficult mental illness that I don't know how to feel, you know, like, cause it it is like, it just destroy everyone around them to feel, to feel better about themselves. Like that's what they do. How long so, were y'all, how long were y'all married? If, if you don't mind 13 asking. 13 years almost. Oh boy. Yeah. Damn. So it's, yeah, that's, it's, you know, and, and like, I, and, and two I, kids, right? Yeah. Two kids. Yeah. And yeah, and uh, you know, and the thing is, is when you're dealing with a narcissist, it's the whole zero contact thing. But you can't do that when you have kids, man. Not yeah. when they're young, you can't. So, like, what the fuck do you do? Like, if that is the case, like, I need to go into therapy. Like, I I was in therapy for a little bit. I need to go into it and work. On, there's a lot I got to work on myself. And you know, like I had talked in the other show about or whatever about being in a relationship too early. And, and that's, that's the thing is like, I, I need to really work on myself and stay single um, until I, until I do that, because it's not going to be healthy for me. It's not going to be, I don't want to hurt someone else um, because of where I'm at. Like, you know, so yeah. <laughs> Like that, you know, like that's the, there's a lot I could go on about, you know, is with my relation, my, my divorce and all that. But, you know, like that's, that's the gist of where I, I've kind of been. Like it's been a roller coaster up and down. Like I love this person, but at the same time, man, do I fucking hate them? Like, because, you know, like, like I said, it, it just, I feel like I did a lot of trying and I did a lot of effort and, and there just was not anything from the other side and and then you know like the whole reason she left is because i stopped paying attention to her (laughs) and it's like what (laughs) like what are you talking about like and i tell her like yeah well okay you've been not paying attention to me it feels like for 10 plus years well yeah but you you stopped paying attention to me you gave up i'm like like, you know, like it just, it's been, it's just no one no, like arguing about it with her. It just, she just doesn't ever get it. Like she doesn't get that. Like, you know, like I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have uh, ignored you or, or been as distant as I did eventually become if you hadn't like, you know, like kept that, our connection strong and and you know like did what we had you know like got married for like i tell her right out like you know like the things that you said when we got married i said are are some of the biggest lies that you've told our entire relationship because you never once tried to fix this and marriage is like everyone knows it's not easy do you think Sorry. Do you think no. it, it was all insincere from the beginning or do you think it's just a matter of the fact that she changed? Because sometimes I do get kind of scared and I've seen it in some couples that have been together for a long time where they're like, oh, he or she is not like how I met them, you know? Yeah, I mean, 
I do. I think, I think it is part of that, but I think part of it of the thing is, is with what, you know, like everyone does change. I, I, you know, I do believe that no one ever, like if, if you don't change throughout your life, then you like, I don't feel like you're really living. If that, if that makes sense, like, I think everyone changes, but, but when, when that, that neglect and stuff that she was doing and was, Mm -hmm. was kind of stunting our, our connection from, from growing and staying connected, like once you, you aren't staying connected and then you're growing, now you're growing apart because you're not connected anymore. And so I think everyone does change, but as long as you keep that, that connection, like you will change and grow together. Like, I do think that, that that's kind of what happened is, yeah, there was a lot of change in both of us, but that connection was lost. Um, Mm -hmm. And so we weren't changing and growing together, you know, Mm -hmm. like. And there was, you know, like there was a lot of things like I, I'll admit like, you know, through the depression and all the things that were coming from, from that connection being lost, like I didn't enjoy those years, you know, when my kids were younger as much as I, as I should have been. And it sucks because like, I loved my kids and all that, but I mean, depression is depression. Like, it doesn't matter how yeah, much dude. you love someone. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. Like, it's going to suck and it's going to be hard to truly enjoy anything when you're depressed. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, and like, you know, there were times that, like, I should have been there more to help her with the kids and things like that. But, like, again, it was that that constant neglect of me and kind of, you know, just being pushed away and feeling like, like she doesn't need me. She doesn't need me here. Like, you know, like that's what she was creating. And then, and then to turn around and try to say, well, you should have been there more for the kids. It's like, you know, like I really wanted to be, but I needed you to be there with me for the kids. You know, <laughs> I like how I like how you mentioned that, because I feel like I feel like a, I've seen a lot of spousal relationships like get really strained as soon as kids show up. It's like um, it's almost like one of one of the one of the adults checks out of the whole process, you know, and it's not even like it's not even like they intentionally do it. It's more like, you know, like. And, you know, normally you see it more on fathers than than why than, than, than uh, fathers and mothers like the the, mm-hmm. the dad immediately like checks out, you know, like usually like the dad doesn't like think they even like to be a fixture in a child's life until like until like the child's like, you know, that age where they don't need to rely on crying and bottles and, and diaper changes mm-hmm. and all that stuff, you know, like usually that's the dynamic. And, you know, like by the time they get to the point where like, you know, like the kids like old enough to where the dad's like actually engaged because like it's a it's a small functioning adult at that point you know and mm-hmm. then the mom's checked out because she's like i've been doing all this shit for four or five years mm-hmm. yeah. yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and i you know like i'm i i haven't been like officially diagnosed um but my sister um actually this year was diagnosed with uh, autism like she is on the spectrum and f- from I don't you know don't quote me I don't really I'm not a doctor or anything but from what she told me like that the the women usually don't get autism unless both of their parents are on the spectrum Mm. really Um, I don't know I don't know how how true that is like I said don't don't quote me on that but I you know like looking that stuff up because I was you know diagnosed as a child with ADHD um, but looking into some of the stuff, you know, with autism, like I, I do like seriously think that, that like I might be on the spectrum as well in some, some aspect now, like, you know, there's different, you know, levels of it, obviously. Like, I mean, you see people with autism that literally cannot function like as an adult, like at all, like in some, some cases, 
Um, that's the very, you know, extreme level of it. But um, like s the sensory, the sensory things like I do when I'm when I'm not on my medication and stuff like when I've been off of like anxiety medications and all that um, things get really bad. And like I, I have where certain noises will just make me just like feel like oh i just want to scream <laughs> and just like be like like push me to anger for, like just like it just doesn't make any sense why i would be so angry at a sound but but a sound can make me feel so like just and i i have that with certain things and you know and like yeah like i was it it like there were times during, you know, like when my kids were younger and stuff where like I would, I just couldn't deal with anything like just by the sound of either the, even just crying or like, and, and that's not normal. Like, like, you know, like if your kids are crying, like you should be like, you want to do everything to, you know, and I, and obviously I did want to do everything you know, to help them and hope that they, you know, they are feeling better and all that stuff. But there were points of like, a, like where it was just like kind of drive me crazy and it would, you know, like irritate me uh, at times. But, you know, like, uh, yeah, I, I think it was just a mix of just so many things going on, the depression and, and like, you know, not being on medication when I should have been and, I did eventually go on it, you know, but I mean, there's just a lot of, a lot of things that, that, yeah. Like, I, I mean, having a child, like I was so excited, mm -hmm. like I was really excited for it, but yeah, there was, there was a lot of, there just a lot of changes going on and, and it really threw everything, you know, kind of into, into a crazy, you know, mess and like, you know, uh, I mean, I, I tried to be understanding. And like I said, you know, like try, I understand that things were going to change and, and you try to adapt with those changes and, and try to, you know, but, but all that time though, like it was, I was struggling to try to keep, you know, like get our relationship to be worked on, but you have these kids and you have, you know, like all this stuff going on. And, you know, and so like, I understand that it would have been hard to work on some certain things maybe during that time, but, but there is so many options. There were so many opportunities though, throughout those years mm -hmm. to, to actually sit and actually have a conversation about things and talk with me about things and try to, you know, improve our relationship. And it just never, she just never seemed interested in it or never really wanted to. And like she said, like, you, I, you know, I've always had a hard time, you know, talking to you about things and I, and I don't like, you know, I don't like, um, confrontation and, and I'm like, well, you know, like that might be so, but if this, any of this meant anything to you, like you would have fought through that mm -hmm. to try to talk to me about it. Because yeah. I was constantly trying to to do something about it, but it just wasn't it wasn't getting that from you. So like you tell me you're basically you were telling me that I was never worth fighting for ever. Like none of this that we've we've done for this thirteen years was and before was ever enough to continue to try to fight for. And the kids not having to experience, you know, like I, you, I, you know, like you should never stay together just for the kids, but, but the, you know, like there's so many things that you've got to think about when, you know, like when you think about trying to fix something and most people do try yeah. to fix it, you know, and, but I didn't get that. I didn't get that. Like, and the second that she, told me she was done she was already off on to some other dick <laughs> you know like mm. like it, so it, yeah 
So it's been, yeah, that's why I took so long and still like, but, but I'm, you know, I want to come back on the shows and stuff and do stuff that, that I've was, uh, you know, always enjoyed doing and talking with you guys and, and just, you know, forgetting about life for a while and just thinking about video games and, and stuff like that, you know, like more often, but like, that's why I took, you know, took off to people, you know, that have kind of probably been wondering, I mean, sure, I'm sure, you know, like I said, I've kind of talked about stuff a little bit, but, but yeah, that's kind of why I took off is it's just been really, really a struggle. A lot of anxiety, a lot of everything like I, and that was the thing too, is like, I had never really had anxiety issues until everything that, that went on and the last couple of years of our marriage and, and all that stuff. Like I had never had anxiety, like really break through, you know, is something that I had a problem with until my marriage, you know, just getting worse and worse and worse. So. So I have a, I have one final question for you. Yeah, um, sure. How did the kids take all of this? Hmm. <sighs> Well, my daughter, or, 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 or do you, no, no, I can talk about it. Like, like I'll, I'll get into it. Like my, my daughter lit full on just fucking made me cry so hard one day. Um, but I think, I think it's, it's really hard to say. I, I think, I think there, there definitely was a lot of stuff that happened that w- was very, 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 very like hurtful um, to them with, you know, them understanding to the level that they can of what's going on. But, but they, they, I think especially my son really, really is, has tried to hide it and mm-hmm. I don't want him to. Like, you know, like, I, I don't want to say like, hey, you know, like bring things up and try to pull emotions out of them. But they're like, my son is a lot like me. He's very, very, very emotional and caring and easily hurt by, you know, by, by things. Um, and I, I do think it bothered him a lot. Um, but he, more than he would let on. And I've kind of, I've kind of the same, like when, when it comes to people dying and things like that, as much as I'm dying inside, I'm always the one that's there to console everyone and, and be the rock, you know, like I have, I can, I can, you know, grieve this later right now. Everyone else needs me to be, you know, be there for them like that. You know, yeah. I've always through myself kind of proverbially in front of the bullet you know like when it comes to stuff like that and then you know in unhealthy ways I've a lot of times held things in and like but I think he's kind of like that and so he doesn't really show show how much it hurt him Mm -hmm. um but the night that I cried, my daughter came up to me once crying. And she said, Daddy, it's so hard not, you know, get, you know, seeing you all, you know, like, Aww. and I just, oh my God, like, just, I died, like, just mm. instantly the second that, that she did. And I'm like, I know, you know, I'm like, I know it is hard and, and it's hard for me too. But like, you know, like I, I, what are their ages, if you don't mind? Um. Well, she just turned nine. She had her golden birthday, Aww. um, this month, and Max is eleven. Okay. So, yeah, he's he's a couple of years older than her, but both of them, I, you know, I do think we're affected by it and stuff, and you know, there's some things that are really hard and upsetting. Mm-hmm. Um. They're already considering her boyfriend as like their other dad, which she's all for. Like, okay, it's it's fine. We should be teaching them that that you know. Mm. 
it's like yeah but you're not mm. married even and uh you've only been together for not even a year yet i don't know like i just don't even there's a lot of things there's a lot of things that are going on that i've aired on on facebook that i probably shouldn't have but uh, there's just a lot of things there's a lot of things that 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 are really are just really really upsetting and make me think that you know the only reason she's with this dude is because she wants that other kid and she will stick with him to get what she wants and i unfortunately that's what i think is going on i i don't know for a fact but when you're talking about kids like that early on in the relationship with someone and talking about him not going anywhere that that early on in the relationship like so sure of yourself that you guys are practically can get married right now because you're so sure that he's gonna always be there man like i i because she wanted that kid really bad with me but i didn't want it and so i i (laughs) i told her right out one day i said i yeah, you just you're the only reason you're with him and you're with that that loser who you know is because you don't want to leave him now. Because you know what? Then you would have to start all over again and finding someone else and your time is running out for that child that you want. <laughs> she was not happy with me saying that to her, but <laughs> hey, you know, like hey, that's I mean... what you make it seem like. That's what. I mean, that's sometimes what I, the truth fucking hurts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the, I and I I don't you know I don't know, but like the I honestly I think that's what's going on in her head is she's getting she's she's forty forty one, and she wanted a kid, and she found someone who will stick with her right now. And she wants a kid. <laughs> I honestly think that's what's going on. <laughs> I don't know. I you know I can't say for sure, but man, it makes it really makes it seem like it. Well, man, thank you for uh, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I'm, no, I no. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, seriously. Like, I mean, you know, like this. Uh, with one thing, you know, like we definitely want to take the time to catch up with you and stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. to uh, all of our longtime listeners here at the, at the Boss Rush Network and stuff, like they know who you are and stuff. And, you know, like we never 100% like disclose why, you know, you, you, you just kind of like yeah. fell out with the network and stuff like that. We respected yeah. your privacy and your, and your choices and things like that. And we yeah. also know like, you know, like life comes at you fast and, you know, like you sometimes, you know, like this this fancy land that we live in where we're podcasters and social media influencers and stuff like that, you know, sometimes it has taken backseat to, to real life things and stuff like that. So yeah, mm-hmm. we, we loved you. We missed you, man. And, yeah. uh, no, and I, yeah, we're, we're yeah. always, we're always thinking about you and pulling for you, you yeah. and your family. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And it's, you know, like I, I actually said something to her today. I said, you know, like her, her parents are, are older. Um, her, her, brother and sister are like 10 years older than her um so her parents are are getting old and her dad is you know getting older and you know has problems and stuff and i fucking love her dad a lot like he he is a lot like me and i you know and like i know i'm not married to her parents or anything like that near her family as they say but like you know that's a lot of years to to look up to someone yeah. you know and, that, and you know like i don't like now they're getting older and who knows how much longer they're going to be around and i don't get to see them as much anymore now mm. like she took that away from me too like mm-hmm. someone that i love as my is my father that i never had like my father was a an abusive abusive drunk you know alcoholic and her 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 dad is one of the sweetest people I've ever met, and unfortunately, her mom is 
my my ex-wife is similar to her mom where like her like she's kind of could be mean <laughs> like her mom would be mean to her dad or is mean to her dad just for liking football and wanting to watch football oh you want to watch that shit all the time you know like you know, I just want to watch football all the time. it's like dude he he enjoys watching football just let him be like why do you need to like treat him like shit because he wants to watch football all the time like you know and i think that's where part of that that you know comes from is her mom like those are those are her things that that my ex-wife picked up from her mom like kind of got brought into to the relationship and just you know i don't know i think there's a lot of a lot of that influence is the reason why there's a lot of contention between us and you know but you know like yeah i'm I not only losing a, a wife but you're losing a family that i care about deeply and don't get to see now as much and you know like it, it's there, there was a, you know i told her like there's a lot more there is a lot to this to fight for that i've been trying to fight for over the over the years you know it's not just you there's a lot of things that i was fighting mm -hmm. the reasons that i was fighting that apparently didn't mean as much to you to want to try to do that as well so <laughs> deep <laughs> deep but you know yeah um glad you were glad you got to talk about it i mean i i mm -hmm. i know that you've been going through some stuff but i you know like Laurent said we there's a there's a line to respecting your privacy and seeing if you're okay mm -hmm. yeah and mm -hmm. i know i'm not the greatest at <laughs> you know straddling that line but um i'm glad you're here and okay and yeah i'm sorry yeah. that you had to kind of go through that by yourself you know it's well, it's hard yeah well you know the the thing is is like you know like i've i tried doing i've been trying to do study that's my problem is like I, i've my whole life you know i've dealt with a lot of things again like you know i had a abusive you know drunk alcoholic father and and so you know, like it was me and my sister and there was times where when he was angry, I'd have my sister come in my room um, and kind of be her protector at times. Um, and but I like when I get depressed and I go through things like this, so I as much as I know that it's so much more like better for you to reach out to friends and like I, again, I always try to just take it on by myself and, and that's, it's a bad habit that I have. And, you know, like, so like, don't, you know, like don't for a second, like think like, Oh, you know, I should have reached up. Cause like, that's the thing is like, I, I was kind of pushing and a lot of times pushing people away to try to deal with it like you know because i like i have to sometimes just sit with my own mind and really go over and analyze things and try to put it all together before i can even really talk to people about it like i've got to figure it out first before i even know what i need to go to my friends to help me talk about you know <laughs> i guess is a way to put it you know so like i did eventually you know start going to friends and talking about stuff but but uh, you know a lot of that was is like you know me kind of disappearing from the show and stuff was like i needed to go to that place that i go to to try to figure stuff out and you know yeah so yeah like don't don't like no one like no none of my friends or anything should ever feel bad if, for not reaching out or anything because chances are I probably would have been more inclined to kind of be pushing somewhat away 
like you know just be, not not to be like mean or you know like but it is just something i had to do i have to do and i know again i know like in a lot of ways it's not healthy but i don't know i haven't been healthy so you know you know like i mean there's a lot going on so but but yeah, you know, like I, I was, I wanted to talk to people about it when I was ready to talk about it and, you know, and move. And like I said, like, I want to be able to, from this point on, like, come on these shows and, you know, be happy <laughs> and talk about, you know, the fun things. And, you know, I'm sure I'll still bring up stuff like off of the show or whatever, because I feel like, you know, I kind of wanted to get it out what I need to say you know, today and, and just kind of let, let that, let that be, be what it is, you know, and kind of try to move forward and just enjoy, you know, talking with you guys (laughs) and not bring, not bringing the show down. So, but, but yeah, you know, so. All right. Well, you know what? I think this is a wonderful place to wrap up the show. <laughs> uh, like, like uh, one more time though, Jesse. Thank you for thank you for sharing sharing that moment with us. Uh, yeah, it, it's uh-huh. a lot. But um, but I also I also believe just on the just for the tone of our show and stuff like that. There's always somebody out there that can probably like listen to this and you know understand some things and also empathize and also realize the situation they may also be in because uh yeah like just. Uh, I, I know the thing about narcissists and stuff like that, but man, like <clears throat> sometimes you got, you puts in perspective that, you know, like that, you know, like people put like the, the, the welfare of their own children, you know, on, on to the side, you know, you know, yeah. for their, for their own personality. Like, I'm just going to call it a trait. I'm not going to call it a flaw or anything, a personality trait and stuff like that. You know, yeah. it's. It, sometimes people need to be reminded and, and hopefully somebody out there will, that was listening today you know, can see that trait in one of their loved ones or spouses or whatever, and possibly try to get ahead of it before, like it becomes like a, a critical mass situation. So thank you for that. And, um, and yeah. yeah. And, and again, like, you know, like I said, like, I, I, I don't, I don't know for certain that she is one, but mm. like, you know, like I also, there's, there's a lot of things that are missing that I didn't get to experience that would tell me otherwise. Well, if it you know, looks, and walks I'm, and quacks like a duck. Yeah. It's a goose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I wanted to, I know this is a serious conversation. I just wanted to bring a little no. laugh, you know, a little laughter. Well, and I, and I always appreciate humor. So. I deal with yeah. a lot of things with humor. So I did like, there was, there was some jokes that, that I had made and things to deal with a lot of it <laughs> throughout this time <laughs> that I've been dealing with stuff. But so yeah, humor is All right. well, appreciated. that's how I deal with things anyway. Well, I'm going to go ahead and outro us. Uh, Thanks a lot for tuning in to an all-new episode of Boss Rush After Dark, the alternative podcast show for the Boss Rush Network. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say goodnight to you guys. Uh, come back for more. We're always we're always going to be here to talk about things that are not always content appropriate for our other anchor shows on the network. We love you all, and have a wonderful and safe night. And if I haven't already said it, Happy New Year. <laughs> Yeah, Hi. right. Those twos and threes at the end. Right. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye.